On the wings of a snow white dove, he sends his pure sweet love. A sign from above, on the wings of a dove. When troubles surround us, when evil comes, the body grows weak, the spirit grows numb. When these things best us, he does not forget us. He sends down his love on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a snow white dove. He sends his pure sweet love. A sign from above on the wings of a dove. When Nova had drifted on the flood many days, he searched for land in various ways. Troubles he had some. But wasn't forgotten. He sent him his love on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a snow white dove. He sends his pure, sweet love, a sign from above, on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a Snow White Dove, he sends his pure sweet love, a sign from above, on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a dove, on the wings of a dove. Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I will be your narrator, Shenandoah Briscoe, and we will be going through the Bible in one year. Today is day 90 and we are going to be covering in the Old Testament, Judges 11 through 12, and in the New Testament, Luke 6, 1 through 26. Father, I just ask for purity in voice and articulation, so that this narration may be a blessing for you and all of those who are listening. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Judges 11, Jennifer and the Galilite, the Galadite, was a mighty warrior. His father was Galid, and his mother was a prostitute. Galid's wife also bore him sons, and when they were grown up, they drove Jephthah away. You are not going to get any inheritance in our family, they said, because you are the son of another woman. So Jephthah fled from his brothers and settled in the land of Tob, where a gang of scoundrels gathered around him and followed him. Some time later, when the Ammonites were fighting against Israel, the elders of Galid went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. Come, they said, be our commander so we can fight the Ammonites. Jephthah said to them don't you hate me and didn't you hate me and drive me from my father's house why do you come to me now when you're in trouble the elders of Galid said to him nevertheless we are turning to you now come with us to fight the Ammonites and you will be her head over all of us who live in Galid. Jephthah answered, Suppose you take me back to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them to me. Will I really be your head? The elders of Galid replied, The Lord is our witness. We will certainly do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Galid, and 
the people made him head and commander over them. And he repeated all his words before the Lord in Mezif. Then Jephthah sent messengers to Ammonite, to the Ammonite king, with the question, What do you have against me that you have attacked my country? The king of the Ammonites answered Jephthah's messengers, When Israel came up out of Egypt, they took away my land from the Aaron to the Jabbok, the Jabbok all the way to the Jordan. Now, give it back peaceably. Jephthah they sent back messengers to the Ammonite king, saying, This is what Jephthah says. Israel did not take the land of Moab or the land of the Ammonites. But when they came up out of Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and on to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Give us your permission to go through your country. But the king of Edom would not listen. They sent also to the king of Moab, and he refused. <clears throat> so Israel stayed at Kadesh. Next they traveled through the wilderness, skirted the lands of Edom and Moab, passed along the eastern side of the country of Moab, and camped on the other side of the Aaron. They did not enter the territory of Moab, for the Aaronon was its border. Then Israel sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon, and said to him, Let us pass through your country to our own place. Sihon, however, did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. He mustered all his troops and encamped Jahaz and fought with Israel. Then the Lord, the God of Israel, gave Shihon and his whole army into Israel's hands, and they defeated them. Israel took over all the land of the Amorites who lived in that country, capturing all of it from the Aaron to the Jabbok, and from the desert to Jordan. Now, since the Lord, the God of Israel, has driven the Amorites out before his people Israel, what right have you to take it over? Will you not take what your God, Sheshmash, gives you? Likewise, whatever the Lord our God has given us, we will possess. Are you any better than Balak, son of Zippopor, king of Moab? Did he ever quarrel with Israel or fight with them? For three hundred years Israel occupied Heshbon, Aror, the surrounding settlements, and all the towns along the Aaron. Why didn't you retake them during that time? I have not wronged you, but you are doing me wrong by waging war against me. Let the Lord the judge, the judge decide the dispute this day between the Israelites and the Ammonites. The king of Ammon, however, paid no attention to this message Jesupheth had sent him. Then the spirit of the Lord came on Jesupheth. He crossed Galeed and Manash, passed through Mezef and Galeed, and from there he advanced against the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord, If you give me the Ammonites into my hands, Whatever comes out of the door of my house to meet me when I return in triumph from the Ammonites will be the Lord's, and I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. Then Jephthah went out over to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gave them into his hands. He devastated twenty towns from Aror to the vicinity of Menaneth, as far as abel Karamimim, Thus Israel subdued Ammonon. 
Then Jephthah returned to his home in Mazapheth. Who should come out the, to meet him but his daughter, dancing to the sound of tim, tiberils? She was an only child. Except for her, he had neither son nor daughter. When he saw her, he tore his clothes and cried, Oh no, my daughter, you have brought me down, and I am devastated. I have made a vow that to the Lord that I cannot break. My father, she replied, you have given your word to the Lord. Do to me just as you promised. Now the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the Ammonites. But grant me this one request, she said. Give me two months to roam in the hills and weep with my friends, because I will never marry. You may go, he said, and he let her go for two months. She and her friends went into the hills and wept, because she will never marry. After the two months, she returned to her father, and he did to her as he vowed. She was a virgin. From this comes the Israelite tradition that each year the young women of Israel go out for four days to commemorate the daughter of Jephthah the Galadite. Jephthah and Ephraim. The Ephraimites forced forces were called out and they crossed over to Zephon. They said to Jephthah, why did you go to fight the Ammonites without calling us to go with you? We were, to, we were going to burn down your house over your head. Jephthah answered, I and my people were engaged in a great struggle with the Ammonites, and although I called, you didn't save me out of their hands. When I saw that you would not help, I took my life in my own hands, crossed over to fight the Ammonites, and the Lord gave me victory, gave me the victory over them. Now, why have you come up today to fight me? Jephthah, Jephthah then called together the men of Galid and fought against Ephraim. The Galadites struck them down because the Ephraimites had said, You Galadites are renegades from Ephraim and Manesh. The Galadites captured the fords of Jordan leading to Ephraim, and whenever a survivor of Ephraim said, Let me cross over, the men of Galid asked them, Are you an Ephraimite? If he replied no, they said, All right, say Shibboleth. If he said Shibboleth, because he could not pronounce the word correctly, they seized him and killed him at the ford of the Jordan. Forty-two thousand Ephraimites were killed at that time. Jephthah led Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Galadite died and was buried in a town in Galid. Ibizan, Elon, and Abdon. After him, Ibizan of Bethlehem led Israel. He had thirty sons and thirty daughters. He gave his daughters away in marriage to those outside his clan, and for his sons he bought, brought in thirty young women and wives from outside his clan. Ibizan led Israel seven years. Then Ibizan died and was buried in Bethlehem. After him, Elon the Zebulonite led Israel ten years. Then Elon died and was buried in Ajalon in the land of Zebulun. After him, Abdon, son of Hiliel from Perithian, led Israel. He had forty sons and thirty grandsons who rode on seventy donkeys. He led Israel eight years. Then Abdon, son of Hiliel, 
died and was buried at Parathion in Ephraim, in the hill country of the Amalekites. And that was Judges 11 through 12. Now we'll turn to the New Testament and find Luke 6. And we will be reading 1 through 26. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. On Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to pick some hands, heads of grain, rub them in their hands, and eat the kernels. Some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what is lawful only for priests to eat, and he also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he went into the synagogue, and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking, and said to the man with the shriveled hand, Get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them all and then said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. The Twelve Apostles On the, one of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray, and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him, and chose twelve of them, whom he also designated apostles. Simon, who he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zelula, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Blessings and woes. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was gathered, was there, and greet, in great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for yours will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you, and reject your names as evil, because the Son of Man. Rejoice in the day the Lord, and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For this is how their ancestors treated the prostitute, the prophets. This is, for this is the, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. And woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. 
And woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. And woe to you when you, everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. And so that concludes the Bible with Briscoe for today. And tomorrow we will be covering the New Testament Judges, third, I mean in the Old Testament, sorry, in the Old Testament Judges 13 through 15, and Luke 6, 27 through 49. Father, I just pray that this was a blessing to you, and I also pray that this was a blessing to everyone who listened, and also that you all come back tomorrow, and that we can continue with the Bible with Briscoe, and in the meanwhile, have a blessed day. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen.